I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Andreas Dubois, and he'll be speaking to us on the use of pazopinib in ovarian cancer. Thank you very much for this opportunity and this introduction. <clears throat> I will present today the results of this randomized phase three placebo-controlled multicenter trial, which is the first positive trial for maintenance therapy with targeted agents in ovarian cancer. So the rationale for conducting this study is that ovarian cancer has the highest mortality among all gynecological cancers, and about 70% of patients are diagnosed in a far advanced stage uh, when they have their diagnosis. Initial therapy has become better and better over the last decades, and currently with surgery and upfront chemotherapy, about 70 to 80 to 85 percent of patients are free of tumor at the end of initial treatment. However, the recurrence rate is high, and almost three quarters of all patients experience relapse. So there is a rational for maintaining this initial high response uh, during the further course of disease. There is evidence that VEGF and angiogenesis plays a major role in the pathogen pathogenesis of this disease and in the treatment. Amposoponib is an orally administered multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor acting mainly on VEGF and some other receptors involved in angiogenesis. It has been registered for renal cancer and sarcoma, and some preclinical data have shown activity in ovarian cancer. Therefore, we designed this trial, a phase three randomized placebo-controlled double-blind multicenter trial, which run all over the world, uh, recruited 940 patients, which were randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion to receive pasopinib orally for two years or placebo. Patients entered the trial after they had finished their primary treatment consisting of surgery and state-of-the-art chemotherapy. They had already a median of seven months before they were randomized for this maintenance phase. So you have to keep in mind that uh, when we count PFS and overall survival, we start with randomization, but the patients already had seven months treatment before. The main inclusion criteria were advanced disease. Uh, patients should have not progressed during primary treatment, and they should have had a standard primary therapy containing platinum and taxane with at least five courses. All variations like IP therapy, dose-dense therapy, or neoadjuvant therapy were allowed. Main exclusion criteria were bulky disease and the need for imminent treatment. PFS by RESIST was the primary endpoint. We did a lot of sensitivity analysis with central radiological review with CA1 to 5 criteria and so on. Main secondary endpoints included survival and tolerability. This is the primary endpoint, the final analysis of the primary endpoint. This study was positive. Pasopinib showed a 5.6 months longer progression-free survival in this cohort compared to placebo. The hazard ratio for recurrence or death was 0.766, and this was highly statistically significant, as you can see at the bottom of the slide. Currently, overall survival are immature. Only 20% of patients have experienced death, so the curves are not very meaningful at the moment. We need 540, uh, 551 events for a meaningful analysis. The mean observation period currently is about two years, and follow-up is ongoing on that. Currently, there is no trend towards either direction. So I conclude. Pasopinib maintenance therapy significantly extends time without recurrence, and thus increases progression-free survival and delays need for further chemotherapy in ovarian cancer. So it prolongs the time where the patient has control over the disease instead of disease having control over the patient. Overall survival data are immature, but currently show no trend in either direction. Pasopinib showed some class-specific toxicities. I will go in detail this afternoon. 
This is hypertension, elevated liver enzymes, neutropenia, and diarrhea, which led to early treatment discontinuation and dose reduction in some patients. Predicting tolerability will be subject to further research. This is the first phase three maintenance study demonstrating superior outcome for a targeted therapy in ovarian cancer. Therefore, pasapinib might be a valuable option in the future for women with FIGO stage two to four ovarian cancer, fallopian tube or peritoneal cancer who have not progressed after receiving first line chemotherapy. This study will be used for registration purposes and hopefully we will have that drug available soon. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Dubois. It will be uh, interesting to see how we incorporate this uh, new targeted agent with the other therapies for advanced ovarian cancer. I think that's exciting early data. <laughs>